Hi, this is Francis over at the Two Time Labs. And I want to share with you a question that I often get, which is how can I improve the way in which I schedule each day? People ask me, and they tell me, that the problem that they have is they often intend to uh, accomplish way more than they actually end up accomplishing each day. Well, it's very simple. First step is to always start the day with a schedule, a written or if not written, then plan schedule on your smartphone, on Outlook, on your PDA, wherever it is. But it's a schedule that's not mental, it's one that's out in front of you. Once you start to use it, you realize that you have to make multiple changes throughout the day because this is just the nature of how work is today. Lots of time demands, lots of surprises, lots of interruptions, technology that sometimes doesn't work causes you to have to go back to revisit your schedule many times a day, which is not a problem given the new technologies that we have at our fingertips. But over time, what happens is that you actually get better. You get better estimating the amount of time things actually take. So that's the first thing, is that you become better at estimating how long activities take, so that when you plan your schedule for the day, you actually are way more realistic than you start off being. So initially, it might look chaotic because your schedule looks like something that, that comes out of a Disneyland, but over time you get better. Second thing you come to learn is how many interruptions you have during the day. So here's a crazy idea. Put time in your schedule for interruptions and don't schedule anything in during that time. It does a couple of things. One, it gives you the peace of mind that when interruptions come up, you don't have a whole bunch of things that are slipping and sliding because you've already made time for that particular interruption. Even though you didn't know what it was, if the kind of work that you do each day results in one or two hours of interruption, you've got to put that schedule, block out that time, so that when it occurs, you can safely go into the interruption solving mode and know that your schedule hasn't fallen apart. Second thing is that you will eventually learn how long those interruptions are and how many of them there are. So when you know how long they are and how, how, how often they happen, I mean, it could be even four hours a day. You become pretty skillful at setting the time aside for what you can accomplish. And when you set your schedule at the beginning of the day, you'll know that you'll get to five o'clock or six o'clock. And you'll know that what you accomplished was accomplished in spite of the interruptions that happened that day. So you won't have a mismatch between your expectations and what you actually accomplished. And then lastly, if you get through a day with no interruptions, as I'm sure often happens, what you're able to do is to go into the following day and pull items from that schedule and move them into today or just simply start working on them. So that when you plan your schedule for the next day, the items that you have scheduled for the next day would already have been started or may even have been done. So please go ahead, share this idea with other people that you work with, uh, people at home, colleagues, wherever they might be, and come back to Two Time Labs for other time management 2.0 ideas just like this one. This is Francis over here at the Two Time Labs. See you soon.